Hello everybody, this is episode 57 of Noise Cancelling, the podcast where we try to be accessibly entertaining about technology. I know it's episode 57 because I've had to look at the running order three different ways, so I've remembered the number for the first time in about 57 episodes. Uh, I'm Gareth Beavis, Global Editor-in-Chief of Tech Radar. Um, as you can tell, I don't prepare these intros very well, but who else do I have with me who hopefully are better prepared? <laughs> hey, I'm Sherelle Smith, Editor-in-Chief of Laptop Mag. I'm James Peckham, Phones Editor for Tech Radar. I'm Chris Barraclough, uh, a YouTube guy thing. <laughs> uh, all right. You, you, you've been on this before, Chris. And I, and uh, I still uh, can't do a decent intro. I apologise. I really should prepare at some point. No, you just still just don't know who you are. I, I really don't. <laughs> I'm genuinely confused after after this week, especially. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, it's been a difficult week. We've all uh, we've all read about Goldman Sachs, and it's been hard for all of us. Um, that was just the last news story that I read. Um, right, so let's get straight in with the big question, which is a chance for us just to you know get the readers softly launched into what's happening with tech this week. Um, and one of the interesting stories this week was Tinder. Um, it's going to allow users to gift lift riders to their d- lift rides to their dates. You wouldn't gift the rider, you know, like <laughs> just find someone and say, you now own this person in this taxi. Um, you can gift lift rides to your dates. Um, so with that in mind, let's do some more fusion work here. Which app would you like to have a gifting feature? And what would you like to gift? Chris, I'm going straight to you because you were drinking water. So I want to put you on the spot. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, all right. So for this one, I'd probably go for any sort of health tracking app uh, where you can basically uh, friends your mates and uh, sort of compete against each other to get the, the, the best health score of the week. And I'd like the ability to send them basically chicken nuggets, deep fried goodies, <laughs> burgers, <laughs> anything to just... Unre- erase all that good stuff they've been doing and make myself feel tons better especially if they're one of these people who gets up at 6 a.m to go for like a two mile run or whatever two miles isn't far actually is that two hour run there you no. go uh while i'm you know struggling to stagger out of bed still yeah but the joke's on you because at 6 a.m you don't want to, you don't want to eat chicken nuggets <laughs> that's just true i'll wait till later in the day and then i'll pounce you see true okay all right, that's a very, very, very strong answer. Um, I'm going to make Pexy follow it up. Yeah, because... um, I want my banking app to have a uh, gifting feature within it, and I want I want to find out whatever app billionaires use, and I want Jeff Bezos to start just randomly gifting money to absolute strangers. I want it to be a complete like chat roulette star, uh, complete random, complete random. Uh, idea and it just go to anyone sort of like in um if anyone's seen justice league there's a scene in uh, Zack snyder's justice league where a similar thing happens where someone just gets a ton of money i want that to happen and i want billionaires to get involved i mean the, i mean the, the whole jeff bezos things is, is more of a thorny issue really because it's a whole like you know during the pandemic how much money amazon made and how much that made could be put back into the employees and how much they'd all have in no i want, I want it sent to random people's bank accounts and, and people to be worried about where that money came from and if it's if it's something to do with the mob or something yeah yeah that's why i was just like not gi- just not giving any context to it you don't know it's from jeff bezos <laughs> he's just there just messing with people because like in a pr way if he does that that's a problem but if he's just doing it for shits and giggles that's brilliant <laughs> <laughs> just changing someone's life for shits and giggles he can do it anyway he's rich enough just to get a list of bank accounts probably i don't know if just money will solve that but i'm, <laughs> I'm assuming money gets you everything so uh so yeah okay uh a different take sheree how about you um i was torn but i'm gonna go with uh snapchat uh i would either get i would either want to gift a take back a snap free um, a card every now and then, like for a regrettable snap that you might have sent while you were drunk, uh, or <laughs> a bottle of your favorite uh, alcohol to lower your inhibitions so you can have reason to use said card. <laughs> okay, yeah, I get. It. I mean, you're gonna, is it going to be contextualized? Is there going to be any kind of reference to who it is, or just like just getting people drunk randomly? I mean, getting people drunk randomly. Cool. <laughs> yeah okay fine i mean literally every part of that makes sense um ah oh, I, I don't even want to say mine because it's so shit <laughs> um, i was i was looking on my phone i was like what app do i use the most and genuinely at the moment it's the analytics app for our website <laughs> and i was thinking Nerd! i just Nerd! yeah oh, i'm sorry for kept caring about your futures um <laughs> but the uh, <laughs> and what i was, was going to say is you know we have a really lovely network of um of different sites in future you know the, the company has got lots of different titles under its hood now and um i know a lot of the editors in chief really well and we all have d- 
different things we try to achieve, different targets. Some days are strong, some days aren't. And I, I wish I could gift some traffic across sometimes Aww. to be like, oh, we've got loads. And like, I know that person is, you know, got a target they want to meet because they've had a different thing going on. And you're like, okay, have some of ours. And while you technically could do that by doing redirects and stuff, I don't think that would go down very well. Um, and as I'm saying it, I'm just like, that's the most boring answer in the world. And I just, I hate myself. You're like Santa, but oh, for web traffic. God, that was so sweet. Yeah, what a shit thing to do. <laughs> oh, that was so I'm sweet. Angry. Yeah, but if it had been anything else, it would be great. But it's just like so, <laughs> so specific. And also, you've got to stop, stop looking at the app. That'd be good. Um, right, I think definitely Chris takes the win there. I mean, that's such a, that's a genius answer. Just like messing, pe- messing with people. Mm. I was thinking it would, it would be equally I was equally funny. It'd be horrible if there was some sort of monogamy app where <laughs> where you, the app was supposed to just re- reward people who are just in stable relationships and you just send them sexy people all the time and try and see what happens. I'm like that would just be horrible. And there's no such app as a, as, a, as one that just tracks you not having multiple partners. So let's leave that one there. Um, Chris, new thing that you wouldn't have had since the last time you were here. It's the Gadget Hall of Fame which is simply put, where you either tell us your first ever gadget or your best ever gadget uh, and chuck it in there. I know you're a listener, which is very lovely, and you have mentioned on uh, on Twitter about the certain things you've enjoyed. So uh, you'll be up to speed with this, which is great. But uh, what are you bringing in and why? And should we throw it in the bin with Swider's headphones? Okay, well, the problem is I've been overthinking this because I, I went down the route of trying to think of something that I genuinely love from my past. And one of the ones was actually something that you mentioned on a recent podcast, uh, the Arcos AV500 multimedia players. Uh, yep. which, uh, Five, in, 504, big one, yeah. Yeah, back in 2005, I had one of those. And this was obviously pre-smartphone. You could download an HD movie from your you know film distribution service of your choosing, uh, stick on this thing, watch it wherever you go. And uh, that saved many a delayed train journey uh, to and from Norwich, which is where my girlfriend at the time used to live. We well, didn't and, save the journey, did it? It just made it, it more bearable. It made it more bearable, I guess. Yeah, yeah. It, um, it didn't. It didn't transport you onto a faster train. It did not. No, that that would have definitely been gadget of the century, an actual teleportation device. Uh, but it meant I could watch, you know, Scooby Doo in HD. You could argue though that the you know your, your phone now with like live train times and stuff is kind of that like i've been on when there was power fade it's been like madcap dashes around the the uk trying to get somewhere and going like well the one leaves in birmingham in like seven minutes and this is going to take five minutes to get there can we do it and then you get there and you go across and it's like so you are sort of doing that but yeah this this makes far more sense i completely cut you off for a really shit story apologies carry on <laughs> sorry uh, so yeah so that, that was uh that was my sort of sensible option but then i i understand that's kind of not really going with the other uh, pathos of this this segment where generally it's like <laughs> musical shoelaces or or something a bit random. Uh, so no, no, like... you and me both. I would absolutely bring in the Arcos for mine. So that uh, you know, if you okay. want to do well, that, if you I could bring in two, because I did come up with a, a, a different answer, which is uh, Mr. T in my pocket, uh, which is uh, it saved saved many a dull evening. A uh, biscuit. It's, it's, it's many a dull as... train journey. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Almost as entertaining as those Arcos. It's just essentially just yeah. a keyring with six uh, little buttons. You just press a button. I pity the fool. And it just comes out with one of Mr. T's little slices of uh, of, of advice for don't give me no back talk, sucker. For how to live your life. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> and the, I love the problem it. is my my five year old daughter gets hands on this all the time, and she just goes around saying, "Let your jibber jabber." Oh, oh my god! Don't make me mad. <laughs> <laughs> does she does she understand the the premise of jibber jabber? I, I, I don't think she understands what jibber jabber is, but because it's sort of a silly word, she loves that, and she just loves telling us to don't give me no back talk, sucker. And all that good stuff. So, <laughs> so if, if, if it can have two, brilliant. Otherwise, it's just just Mr. T in your pocket. Thanks. That makes me want to watch the um, Mr. T treat your mother right video so oh. so bad. Absolute classic. <laughs> I, I, I I shouldn't throw somebody I know under the bus. I'm not going to tell you who, but it was it was a brilliant mess in a, in a WhatsApp message today. Um, they said, "Oh, love it when a plan comes into fruition." And I was just oh. like, "Are you?" I, was like, I couldn't work out if they were just completely un, didn't know anything about the A team or did know something about it and just forgotten that it was subliminally sort of implanted that whole, I love it when a plan comes together. And I was just like, did you do that? Was that on purpose? Was that not? It was a, uh, ooh, love it when a plan comes ooh, to fruition. You said she. You said she. Yeah. <laughs> Narrowing the search. We Here can we work go. this out, guys. <laughs> it's, it's my mum. There we go. Uh, it's not. <laughs> she listens to this podcast sometimes. <laughs> Come here. Um, Okay, I do. I mean, Cherie, 
which one would you prefer? I think the answer's clear, right? Treat your mother right. Your mother. Like, I'm watching this ex- immediately after this podcast. I'm, oh, my God. I used to love that video so, so much. It's the best. Yeah. Everyone needs a little Mr. T in their life. Treat definitely. Her right. Treat your mother right. Yep. It's happening. <laughs> I thought you were telling me that I was being mean to my mum. <laughs> uh, right, let's move on to the next section of this. It's your standard news. And this week, it's been all about the Unplu OnePlus. Unplu Neuf, OnePlus 9. Look at me with the, with the French. Um, OnePlus 9, OnePlus 9 Pro, OnePlus Watch. These are all out. And Chris, you've tried all three. Is that right? Not the watch, just the 9 the and watch. the 9 Pro. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no one's tried the watch. I knew that far. I've done my research. Um so, Pexy, also, you've been looking at these phones. So, which one is best and why? And, Chris, I hope you disagree completely. Yeah. Um, which one is best? It's the Pro. The Pro is best. The Pro is also a lot more expensive. And the Pro is uh, now similar sort of price to most flagship phones. I mean, there's no longer the flagship killer as much this time. There's it's still a tiny bit cheaper, but still uh, still very, very expensive. Um, around the £850 mark in the UK and uh, nearer to the $1,000 mark in the US. Um, so I've been reviewing the OnePlus 9 Pro for the last week and a bit. Um, absolutely fantastic phone in pretty much every way. I was in my review, I gave it 4.5 stars and said that this is the first time it feels like you can recommend a OnePlus device without any of the major caveats that you used to have to have around it. They have improved the camera. Um, that's been their main focus, OnePlus's main thing they've been focusing on this time they've got the new relationship with Hasselblad and a new sensor made in collaboration with Sony um but it's still not the absolute best camera phone on the market it's still it but it is it's up there now it can now compete with the iPhones it can compete with Samsung it can compete with the Huawei's that we also recommend as good camera phones as well much more natural color calibration within the images um some impressive distortion um elements within the ultra wide camera telephotos kind of fine um still good enough for what most people will probably need but yeah the the one plus nine pro is the one to watch if you're if you're if money is no object essentially and you're and you're interested in one plus phones um but yeah the camera is the main the main focus here um i don't i assume chris agrees with everything in that but we're we're about to find out <clears throat> um not not entirely i've got to admit i've i'm, I'm struggling to get in, excited about oneplus smartphones anymore mm. uh and it didn't help that uh poco did its big launch the day before the oneplus uh, nine series yeah. one so you've got the likes of the poco f3 which is a 329 pound handset which has an amoled screen it's got a snapdragon 870 chipset which is not much of a step down at all from the 888 so you can do all mm. your, your gaming on genshin impact on maximum res and all that stuff if you want to uh, the camera's absolutely fine, uh, you know, and it, it basically does everything you need it to, and it's like less than a half half the price of these OnePlus handsets. Quite a bit as well, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, and the OnePlus 9s, I don't know, they, I don't know what it is about them, but they, they just felt like an incremental upgrade yeah. at best over the previous ones. I'm still struggling a bit with the camera tech. I, I agree with the ultra wide angle uh, snapper; that is fantastic. We've got some really nice portrait shots and uh, sort of funky uh, bokeh style affairs with that one. Uh, but yeah, the primary one, I was still struggling a little bit with saturation issues and 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 also the fonts were just a little bit buggy in places as well, I found. Uh, palm intrusion was bad as some of the display tech as well. I don't know if you tried the uh, the anti-smoothen feature. Mm. Uh, not not anti-smoothen, the smoothen feature on the OnePlus 9 Pro, uh, which just kind of gives you that sort of hyper-realistic sort of 90 to 120 frames per second effect. Uh, I find whenever I activated that, for instance, then the entire screen would just go unresponsive and I'd really struggle to skip forward or back or even like get out of the video I was watching on the likes of Netflix. Uh, so I think this, like most OnePlus smartphones, there's a little bit of tweaking, some updates only probably needed. So I'll probably go back into it a bit and then be like, oh, okay, no, actually, I'm, I'm enjoying this a bit more. Uh, hopefully some of the, the camera stuff will be corrected. Um, but yeah, no, I, I just find it a struggle to recommend these phones when you've got the likes of the Poco F3s and these really uh, sort of just crazy cheap Chinese uh, rivals mm. that uh, that offer a lot more for a lot less. Yeah, the problem is the problem there is that for our audience, it's, it, they're not available in the US, annoyingly. Yes, they're, um, they are UK only, UK only. For, well, UK only in terms of um, the markets that Terradar covers. So yeah, um, but they they are really exciting those Pocos, and um, we rated the um, X3 NFC our best cheap phone. 
for a while. Um, so really, really excited to see what those what those next ones are like and properly dig into them a little bit more. Yeah, really good. The X3 Pro is basically the NFC with uh, beefed up performance. So yeah. that's uh, that's a good one for 200 quid. Like it, it'll do everything that most people need it to do. Mm. Um, so yeah, and then yeah, <laughs> so many other phones this week as well. Yeah, my head is a jumble of specs. I feel like uh, it's interesting you said that OnePlus came as sort of that flagship killer, and now it's just a nondescript flagship maker again. You know, we, yep. we did the phrase just another iterative update. You know, they're good phones, they're fine, they do the stuff, but you know, in terms of sales, they're still they're not they're not in the top ten sellers in the worldwide. You know, they don't have that large scale. You know, cheap. You know, like Samsung, Xiaomi, all have you know these very cheap end phones that just do the volume and therefore they've got the sales and the premium segment which is a very difficult one to crack into while OnePlus does have that kind of cachet there and you wonder how long it can last doing that it still it still manages it to to keep going somehow but I, you don't seem to you don't look forward to OnePlus launch in the same way that we used to and it just feels like how is this brand continuing to to impress and it doesn't sound like these phones have done that yeah, especially it doesn't help that OnePlus basically announce everything about the phone about two weeks before the yes. phone bloody launches. They're about <laughs> as good at keeping secrets as my five-year-old daughter. I wrote Tech Radar's live blog yesterday for the OnePlus launch and pretty much every single sentence ended with, but we already knew this. We, we already, already knew this. Yeah. <laughs> are, are there any surprises coming? Nope. When we do the amount of times that we've all done this where we've had an embar- phone under embargo and we know, and we've, so we've done, we know everything about it, and we're doing a live blog, and they're doing the tease bit by bit, and you're like, "Oh, look, it's got a 4.6 inch screen," and "Oh, wow, the cameras are new," and you're like, "Oh my god!" And then, or even worse than that, actually, is when they're doing the um, they're doing the the unveiling, and the, and we're writing the live blog, and at the start of it, they've lifted the embargo, so everything about this phone is already on yeah. our website, and you're like. <laughs> And oh, it's got cameras, which we've told you about. Oh, it's got this, and we've told you about that as well. Just and I'm like, just go and read that. Like, yeah, here's the review. You know, Boom. Yeah, done. exactly. Like, I'd say you end up just sort of live blogging the pizzazz or lack thereof of these things, or <laughs> waiting for someone to say something sexist, maybe, or you know, just <laughs> looking through, you know, which it just happened in the past, unfortunately. You know, you're not waiting for that, of course. You don't want that to happen, but it's that kind of like the the more. Um, you know the things that stand out that just from what they're saying rather than anything else and ultimately i've started talking about the steve need up shoes nokia ceo before because they were really funky green and that was the best thing i could speak about at that point <laughs> also someone else in the in the crowd next to me had just broken an embargo on another phone and it was really distracting so uh, <laughs> just just li- watching them just melt down at the same time anyway we're moving straight past um very quickly do we care about the watch yeah, I mean, a bit. It, it, the best thing about the watch is that it seems to go with a proprietary OS, right, rather than Wear OS, which is good yeah. because it looks very similar to the Oppo watch in in many ways. And the worst thing about that Oppo watch was the fact that the Wear OS integration was just terrible. Uh, it it was dog doo doo. So hopefully this will this will be a nice user experience. And it doesn't look like it's going to be too much money either. It's one hundred fifty nine dollars in the US. I know that doesn't that's not the absolute cheap end of the market, but it's also not um, not the three hundred dollars sort of element of a Samsung watch. So you, you might say that you know the OnePlus really worked itself as a community. That it really at the beginning it was all about people in the know. You knew about it. You had it. It was that community, and they had their own little sort of clubhouse almost. So speaking of which, Sheree, uh, what is Clubhouse, and is it coming to Android? Ah. Uh- The answer is Clubhouse is coming to Android, quote unquote, in a couple of months, according to the co-founders. Now, what is uh, Clubhouse? Um, Clubhouse is basically a a upgraded version of those party lines that we had back in the 80s and 90s, like looking for a friend. Call eight one eight hundred looking for a friend. It 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 kind of is. So basically, what it. (laughs) That's not what my perception of it is. I haven't, I haven't used it, but it didn't, I didn't think it was a sexual. <laughs> well, it's not. It's not. It's not. I mean, it can be because there are a few risque clubs on Clubhouse. So if you are so inclined, and you, uh, you, you want to get into a little blue language, then yeah, it's there. But, but, but in a nutshell, what um, Clubhouse is is currently an iOS exclusive app that allows you to join different quote unquote clubs um, that people create. And it's an audio only service. It does not record. So if you say something uh, scandalous, there is theoretically no uh, proof of it afterwards, even though people have been finding ways to post uh, s- some unsavory uh, clubhouse chatter. Um, 
But um, Swider and I have actually been running a room for a couple of weeks uh, talking about consumer new consum- blue stuff. Yeah, uh, no, not talking about blue stuff. Not yet. I like that's that's for <laughs> that's for Clubhouse after dark. Um, but uh, talking about consumer electronic news one day, and then the other, um, talking about how to break into the industry or how to pitch right or how uh to get how to maintain vendor relationships and create them. So it's it it's whatever you want it to be. Um, it starts out as you just make a room. You, people can you can make it closed you can make it open people can jump in you can schedule it um people come in listen to what you have to say you can have them interact um and really develop uh cool organic conversations uh on the app and after three such meets you can make your own club and the, like and that's where the social gambit is because right now since it is very much invite only so right now i still have a few invites to clubhouse uh now is the time to get in before they let let the rest of us in because i i actually am an android user i just happen to have an iphone um and get your social clout going a lot of celebrities have been just jumping into random uh random clubs willy-nilly one of my friends had a clubhouse and uh farah from destiny's child jumped in there and we had a lovely conversation about uh ocean deep ocean fishing it was wild and we also talked about music <laughs> but like it that's just the kind like that's how random clubhouse can be and that's what makes it so appealing this is the, this sounds just like chat roulette when it first started where it was like you just connect to people you have random conversations oh look i talked to a member of destiny's child about deep ocean fishing and then it's 10 months later it's just dick pic somehow like <laughs> just like just just the way it, like chat roulette was absolutely ruined by people just taking their clothes off i mean randomly well used- since this is audio only the worst that you're going to get like i mean there have been <laughs> so lakeith stanfield came into somebody's room and i guess the topic was why don't men moan during the act and started moaning so yeah relevant to the interests so that's fine okay i think i think we've fully got an understanding of it and i'm glad it's coming to android so that we can hasten this march towards blue content which is what we all want (laughs) um final piece of news that's talked this week and i'm excited about this because we know gareth is on the vr train but just it's still stopped outside a station uh the psvr new controllers for psvr 2 they look pretty cool chris have you seen these I have, yeah. And they do look a step in the right direction because whenever I'm doing VR, I've got a very small house, so I'm inevitably punching walls and sometimes family members as well. Is there anything that can protect your knuckles while you're... Yeah, not, you know, not on purpose, just to be clear. Not on purpose, no. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, exactly, 100%, yeah. 100% accident, yeah. an accident, yeah. Uh, so anything that can protect your hands while you're doing a bit of all that, that would be uh, that would be good. Chris was airboxing there. A bit of all that <laughs> is a very difficult <laughs> audio <laughs> feature <laughs> for lots of people. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I think these, you know, they, they, they look a lot more like the Oculus Quest um, mm. smaller triggers. That, you know, the old ones are basically just like the light ones. You just wobbled around in front of a camera. Uh, it wasn't good. These are like actual sort of cameras, like almost like sort of bracelets. I don't know. They go sort of like... They're like orbs. They go around they your fully, hand with little, yeah, they fully yeah, envelop orbs. your there hands. There you are. Yeah. That's the one. And there's, there's joysticks and buttons and everything. And they, yeah, that's, to me, that's what VR should be. So... Um, so, Cherie, any thoughts on the Sony PSVR 2 controllers, whether they're a step in the right direction? Um, Yeah, they're definitely a step up from the Move controllers, Um, which, I mean, RIP Move controllers, Uh, going, no, not going too soon, go, um, finally gone. <laughs> um, They, like, they, these look better in tune to pick up your finger movements and, uh, and wrist movements. It looks like there's going to be more pre- precision on these controls, and they look pretty funky fresh uh to quote the kids <laughs> um so i if the if the um if the controllers are looking like that i'm really looking forward to seeing what the actual headset is going to look like because that um make that's hopefully pointing to that it's going to look more like an oculus quest and have less wires and ha- have less uh attaching doodads to make it work yeah, it is. It is hard to go back to the PSVR after using the Oculus Quest and having that wire-free, sort of like complete freedom. Definitely. 
Uh, right, let's move on to the news blast. Cherie, you know the rules, but the listeners might not. 60 seconds to tell us as much as you can about as many stories as possible, and you cannot read from a script. Very simple rules. It's very exciting. Are you ready? Let's do this thing! Uh, right, on your marks. Get set, go. Uh, in the world of leaks, uh, we found out that Call of Duty might be taking us back to uh, World War II. The name, Call of Duty, World War II, Vanguard. All right. Um, everything's better with a screen, or so people seem to think. Um, Apple HomePod is going to be the next one to come with a screen, um, supposedly to come after the Amazon Echo Show. Uh, so, Amazfit, I don't know who this company is. Apparently, they make uh, fitness watches. Their latest watch is going to be called T-Rex, which is funny because T-Rex have small, small arms, but whatever, it's supposed to be rugged. Uh, Crash Bandicoot is coming to mobile. It will, it, while it will be an endless runner, it will not be an endless runner because it will have bosses, it will have seasons, and it will have base building. Um, Steam Link, oh my God, guess who's coming to Mac? Steam Link, so finally, uh, even though I didn't even know you could really ma- game on a Mac like that, but apparently so, so it's coming to Mac in that we're all happy. It's- Done. <laughs> ah, uh, yeah, we're about average. Yeah, yeah, the, cl- the classic Cherie 5. <laughs> <laughs> Strong and stable. But you know, when, you know when Cherie does a story, you will understand every element of that story, and that's the... Yeah. <laughs> It's more useful, I think. <laughs> T-Rex have got short arms. I mean, many fans of the show would say that Gar- Gareth gives the most. When I looked at the story, I'm like, why would you name it T-Rex? They have itty bitty arms. like Because they're hard. They're the hardest dinosaur. Yeah, no. Uh, like, uh, I, like... Nah, that, that's an unpopular opinion, I feel. Uh, uh, Allos- Allosaurus, he was pretty tough. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the Stegosaurus is pretty hard. I mean, there's, there's a lot. I mean, ultimately, I wouldn't fight many dinosaurs, if I'm really honest. Uh, straight up. Uh, apart from those little, well, even the little ones, they're really cute. All you could do is kick them, and then I feel really awful about it. Anyway, let's let's bundle straight into another unpopular opinion. Uh, other than which dinosaur could you kill with your hands? Um, Cherie, let's sing us in. Unpopular opinion, let your hate unfurl. It seems it's been so long since I've been able to be a curmudgeon. Unpopular opinion. And Chris, follow it up. Big suck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I loved it last time. I love it this time just as much. <laughs> this week's Unpopular Opinion talks around double folding, or in specifically Samsung's possible double folding phone. But Cherie, oh my God, you've got some thoughts. I mean, we just got one fold. Now you're trying to turn phones into origami. I don't think it's... I, I, I'm just not a fan. I've got to see it in action. Um, I think the first the first version of this is going to suck immensely. I All I can see when I see this headline is repairability um, issues. I just yearn for iFixit to get its hands on one of these phones and, tr- and just break it or open it up or whatever iFixit does. It's like, yeah, this phone is just... <laughs> it, it, it's just cruising for a bruising it like if you put it in your pocket it's so dainty it's going to it's just going to crack like i i, I just don't like and where's the other fold going to be like I, I i i need to see this phone in action but just the thought of it i just think about the repairability aspect of it and i'm just not a fan okay chris yeah no, i agree i think folding phones are friggin stupid so uh <laughs> so yeah more folds nah nah now, I, gr- I agree that, you know, there's, there's more chance for this kind of thing to break, but this is, we need, we need this. We need this innovation to happen. We need things to flip out and fold out and roll out and do like cool stuff. So eventually we get that thing where it's just one tiny little cube that folds out into a TV. This is the, these are the things we need to do to get to that world where you can just, like I said, you're on your train, Chris, you know, or, you know, Chris <laughs> Jr. Jr. Going to Norwich to, to meet their space girlfriend. And yep. they, uh, <laughs> they, they're bored and they've only got their little TV nugget to play with. Oh, no, like, I've got my Mr. T. I'm fine. <laughs> that, that's a, fam- a family heirloom you're going to pass down and down. And down. <laughs> you know, it's like, until the battery dies and then we discover that that battery doesn't exist anymore. And then I'm fine, basically. <laughs> no, they better like dump it in hydrogen or something. So I feel like <laughs> that's work. true. Okay, I mean, that was, a, that was a swift, but I feel fair, unpopular opinion. Unless, Pexy, you've got any other thoughts. No, I'm, I'm with Cherie. <laughs> <laughs> wow, everyone's just like, yeah, yeah, this idea sucks. Well done, Sam. Uh, because <laughs> because where, is, where is the other fold going to go? How far can you fold it? Like, like 
Is it just going to be two all the way around? Is it going to be two vertical fo folds? Is it going to be a horizontal fold? Is it going to be a vertical and a, and a horizontal? What is the use case? Is like the only thing I can see this being a use case for is if it's uh like what is a horizontal fold and you can fold it under to use as a kickstand to watch the rest of the screen. But other than that, that's a waste. It, where where else is this other fold going to go? Where's it going to go? I mean, like come like wings. You know, you got like a little thin phone in the middle, and then whoop whoop. Big tablet. So, but when you, but when you're using it as a fold, where is what are the fold? Where are one or both of the folds? Like what? Like what's that? Like a wallet. They're both fold, they fold on top of each other. Like I don't, I don't know. Why I'm fighting this. I don't know. I'm just like <laughs> I feel like I'm suddenly the, the only one defending foldable phones because I'm, I'm just believing them as a possibility. Yeah, but, I, but I, 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 like yeah. I'm here to bring you over to the, to the right side of the equation on the, on this question. Like where is the fold going to go? What is the usefulness of the uh, other parts that are just dangling? there like <laughs> I, I don't know it just i want it i want four folds i don't know where they're gonna go i just want bigger phones Samsung's that's problem. all it is just, i like, do big want bigger good. phones but not this way not like this <laughs> yeah fine well let's let's end it on that note where not like this is the the tagline for the show um <laughs> chris have you have you had fun uh immensely immense amounts of fun thanks yous i can't speak anymore sorry it's been that kind of week have you actually had fun? I feel like when you said that, you're like, oh, I should say yes out of politeness, but really, it's <laughs> awful. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, no, I hate you, Gareth. Don't invite me on ever again, please. Oh, I know you're joking, but it still hurts. <laughs> Don't make me <laughs> mad! <laughs> <laughs> How how can people read or see or learn more about the world of Chris Barraclough? Look, my world, my world is not a place you want to you want to learn about, uh, believe me. But uh, if you want to see more of me banging on about tech, you can go on YouTube and my channel is called Techspert. Great. And how do you spell Techspert? Just to be clear again. So tech as in technology and spurt as in a big old spurt. Oh. Okay. <laughs> James Peckham, <laughs> how how can people get in contact with you? Have you had a good day? Are you talking to me? Yeah, yeah. I've had I've had a great day. I'm 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 at James RWP on Twitter, and you can read everything I write on Tech Radar. And Sheryl Smith, Miss Smith Eleven. How can people get in contact with you? I, I'm sorry, I'm still stuck on spurt. Like mm. <laughs> literally, literally stuck. <laughs> it's, on spurt. it's 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 right up there. Like I did not know that that was a trigger word for me. It's like right up there with moist. It's like mm, I don't like it. Yep. I don't like it. But anyway, it's almost like that's why he chose it. Anyway, people can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Miss Smith Eleven. That is M I S S Smith Eleven. Eleven. <laughs> and um, as always, for all your laptop, tablets, uh, I guess foldables, VR, gaming, apps, uh, word processing, standing desk needs. Of course, of course, come to Laptop Mag. Come, come, stop by, sit down. Grab us, grab an article, a hot cup of Joe, um, and then laptop then, laptop now, laptop now. <laughs> we we record this in a multiple multiple different ways, but we also have a group hangout, obviously, because we're all parts of the world and lockdown. And Cherie just went right off the peak meter on that. Just, <laughs> uh, yeah. You could hear that. It was like laptop. Lap, no, lap, no. <laughs> the world ceased to exist for about three yeah, seconds. Exactly. Um, or Cherie just destroyed the world with such passion for Laptop Mag. Um, I am, I'm about to say, I'm Gareth L. Beavis. That's not true at all. I'm Gareth Beavis. Um, and so you can find me tweeting on Super Beav very rarely, if I'm honest at the moment, but much better to go on the Tech Radar Twitters, Tech Radar Instagrams, Tech Radar Facebooks. Just Tech Radar. Very easy. Lots of stuff on there. Often quite good uh, is a, a quote that I hope someone one day says. Surprisingly average would be also amazing. Um, but thank you for listening to the Noise Cancelling Podcast. Please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts because then that helps more people hear about us and we go up the charts. And really, I just want to be on one of them featured things one day just because we've got through something. So please leave a review. Just give us five stars, even if you just got nothing else to do. That would be lovely. Uh, and thanks very much. And we will speak to your ears next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.